I recently went through my collection of 3DFX cards and noticed that I have 5.5 Voodoo 2s, but only two of those are functioning. This displeasing ratio needs to be improved, which is why we are going to have a look at this Voodoo 2 from Creative today. The model number is CT6670 and overall the card seems to be in very good condition. Furthermore, the card is equipped with 12MB of 100MHz EDO memory, 24 chips with half a megabyte each. One evening, I plugged the card into my Pentium 3 system and curiously awaited what Mojo had to say. Unfortunately, I did not capture this footage, but the summary I got looked similar to this. This image is edited to the best of my recollection and may not be exactly what Mojo displayed that day. However, it is close enough to give you an idea of how this project started. As you can see, the FBI memory is cut in half. Instead of 4 MB, we only have access to 2. Mojo also reports that we only have one texture mapping unit, even though there should be two. And to make matters worse, the one TMU that is listed doesn't have access to any memory. I guess I should be happy that the card was detected at all and that we get a sign of life from this card. Since I had to deal with my fair share of memory issues while creating the memory upgrade mod for the Voodoo 1, I assumed an issue with loose solder connections on the 3DFX chips to be the root cause. If reflowing solder around the 3DFX chips is all this card needs to work properly again, then it will be an easy fix today. Or so I thought. But more about this later. If you have a misbehaving Voodoo 1 or Voodoo 2 card, run the debugging tool mojo. It may help you to understand what could be wrong with your card. More often than not, it is just some solder connections that have weakened over the years. As you can see here, the solder on those pins looks dull. My other Voodoo 2 cards from Diamond are of similar age, and the solder on those looks much better. Maybe Creative tried to save some money by using low quality solder, but it could also be related to how this particular card was stored. Unfortunately, I only have this one card from Creative and cannot compare it to another one. But I'm curious if you have one of those cards with the same issue on the solder joints. Whatever the reason for my card having those issues, it deserves a second chance to render glide titles again. Therefore, I will do my very best to reflow all solder connections and hopefully restore the full functionality of this creative technology 3D Blaster Voodoo 2. Before we test the card, a quick word from PCBWay, the sponsor of today's video. Are you looking for a way to bring your electronics projects to life? PCBWay offers top-notch PCB manufacturing and assembly services, ensuring your designs are expertly assembled with precision and care. Plus, with their cutting-edge full-color PCB printing technology, you can add vibrant graphics and designs to your circuit boards like never before. Trust PCBWay for reliable assembly and stunning full-color PCB designs, making your projects stand out from the crowd. Other services include 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and CNC machining. Links to PCBWay.com are in the video description. With fresh solder on the pins of all 3DFX chips, we can finally test if it was worth the effort. Mojo detects the card and displays the information we would expect. One FBI chip and two TMU chips, each having access to 4MB of memory. Great! That was an easy fix! Let's benchmark the card and then we can put it on the pile of working Voodoo 2 cards. I will run a few benchmarks and a few 3D games to make sure the card works properly. 3D Mark 99 detects the Voodoo 2, including the 12 megabytes of video memory. Uh, that doesn't look right. Where are the colors? If you had a Voodoo 1 or Voodoo 2 back in the day, you may remember getting such video output especially if you had a low-quality pass-through cable that sometimes lost connection to the VGA ports. 
Of course, this was the first thing I checked. But the pass-through cable is responsible for getting the 2D signal through the Voodoo card, like the boot screen or the Windows desktop. The problem with the colors appears only when we enter the 3D mode. So this cannot be the fault of the loop cable. And the chance that this is the cable connecting to my capture device is also very slim, because then I should have had this issue on the Windows desktop as well. What is going on here? In Unreal Tournament, the color composition remains the same. Green and blue seems to be present. However, red is missing. In a match of Capture the Flag, the absent color red is very obvious, since you cannot see the red team's score at all. Changing the setting for gamma correction and pushing the slider for red all the way to the right does not improve anything. The color red is still missing when entering the 3D mode of the Voodoo 2. This is something I have never encountered on a Voodoo card before, but I hope we will be able to figure out what is going on. Today is also the first time I'm going to use an oscilloscope. This tiny device is capable of measuring voltages, duty cycles, frequencies and many other electronic signals. And we are going to use it to analyze the red, green and blue signals coming from the VGA connector. But first, let's have a look at a pinout diagram. As you can see in this graphic, the red, green and blue signals are transmitted through pins 1, 2 and 3 respectively. So, then let's see what kind of signals we can read on pin number 1. And the oscilloscope tells me that there is… nothing. So, red doesn't seem to transmit any data, which would explain the picture we have seen before. The pin for green on the other hand seems to transmit a lot of data. And the same is true for blue. But it looks like the red signal is completely dead. I wanted to see how a working card behaves and tested one of my working Voodoo 2s from Diamond. And here you can see that the red signal is similar to the other colors. This is what we need to restore on the other card. But where do we start? Well, we can follow the traces from the VGA connector and see where that pin for the red color connects to. And eventually, we end up at this IC. A rather tiny chip which sits between the VGA input and the VGA output ports. This is a 10-bit 2-port bus switch and it is somehow related to the VGA output. Maybe this is the chip responsible for switching between the 2D and the 3D signals. Let me know in the comments if you know more about it. So, this chip is my first suspect. But before I jump to conclusions, I probed around that area to see if there is anything else suspicious. And it didn't take long to find something odd. Those three surface mounted diodes should behave similarly in my opinion. However, this last diode is shorted between two pins. This isn't the case for the other two to the left, so we could also have an issue here. But guess where both pins connect to? Correct. So I would say let's replace this chip and see if it makes a difference. Fortunately, I do have a donor Voodoo 2 card which is missing one TMU, has the other one damaged and is in pretty bad shape overall. But it does have the chip we need. Instead of blasting hot air over the entire card and the plastic VGA connectors, I decided to use low melt solder for desoldering the chips. Once the IC was removed from the card, the short between the diode terminals disappeared. I guess we are onto something. Now we just need to get the donor chip installed on this card. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
and we have successfully transferred the chip from the donor card. But the question is, has the red color returned? Can you believe it? The red color is back! And all because of this tiny faulty IC? I'm curious, and be honest, did you toss a voodoo card because of a discolored VGA output? Do you remember having such issues that weren't related to your pass-through cable? Let me know your stories in the comments. And before we finish up, I want to let you know that I will soon start selling the items I fix on this channel, because I'm running out of space at home. And let's be honest, I don't need more than two Voodoo 2 cards for SLI. Additionally, your purchase will help to fund this channel so I can get interesting hardware and repairs to you in the future. And you can own a piece of computer history with a dedicated video on this channel. Let me know if this would be interesting to you so I get an understanding if there is demand for it. And with this we have reached the end of this video. I hope you are happy that we could save this Voodoo 2 today. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.